In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to describe the relationship between two categorical variables. For more information on doing this, you can refer to the Making Your Case text by Auerbach and Zeitlin, starting on page 118. Uh, to begin with, you need to make sure you have installed the Gmodels uh, package. If you haven't, refer to the uh, video on installing packages. Once you have it installed, you simply have to load the package by clicking the checkbox next to its name. To get the packages, of course, just click on packages. And now I'm going to click on the name, the checkbox next to uh, the G models. And it loaded it, and we get the message that it's been loaded. Um, you only have to load. You only have to install the package once, but each time you start a new R session, you do have to load uh, the package you want to access. So um, now um, that it's loaded, let's think about uh, a kind of relationship we can compare in comparing two categor categorical variables. Um, I'm interested in looking at the relationship of factors uh, related to patients returning within um, 30 days. So we could take a look at um, describing the relationship of gender and returning in 30 days. Those variables exist in the Hospital One data set. Let's go ahead and open it. I'm going to click on File and Open File. And I have it on my desktop, so I'm going to scroll down and find the Hospital One R data. And I'm going to double click it, click on yes to load it into my environment. And now it's in the environment. Um, to You can see it on the top right panel. I'm going to click it once. And um, now I have um, a spreadsheet in the top left panel. Uh, so here's the gender variable, which is coded as male and female. You could scroll up and down to look at it. You can't modify anything in this um, window, but you can view anything, any of the variables. So return 30 is coded as no and yes. OK, so uh, to describe that relationship, we have to access the cross table function in Gmodels. So we'll simply type capital C and then an R, O, oops. And now I get a flyout. It's always better to use those flyouts because you notice that there's a capital T in the middle. Um, all right, uh, so now I have to refer to the variables we want to compare and put those in, in between those parentheses. First, I'll type in the name of a data set, which is hospital one, and then a dollar sign and I get a flyout for gender. And now um, a comma to um, put in the next variable. So I'm going to start with hospital again. And I get the flyout. And then dollar sign. Get that nice um, list of variables that fly out and return 30. Um, now, uh, gender would be considered an independent variable. and return 30 would be a dependent variable. So now I'm just going to hit enter. And here we have it. Here's the table. So let me describe this table to you. If you scroll up, you'll see that you'll see a description of the cell contents. So um, the first is the N, and that's 50. So that would suggest then that 50 people um, who are female also didn't um, um, return in 30 days. The next is the chi-square contribution, which we'll not discuss today, but in the future we will. And the third is the row total, which is the percentage um, going across, which would be the percentage of uh, female. Then we have the column total, which is the percentage of no's 
that are female um, compared to males who are no, which is 67.6% and 62.4%. I should mention that um, these are proportions, but multiplying them by 100 gives you a percentage, which would be 37.6%. So um, the final number is the total that cell is of the entire sample of 161. So it's 31%. So let's see um, what, um, how we could describe what we see here. Um, well, since the independent variable is on the row, I'm going to go ahead and compare um, um, down since we're percentaging across. So in a, in a way, the best way to look at this is that you percentage along the independent variable here, right? And that along the independent variable would be the row, and then you compare down. So here we have 78.1% versus 85.6%. So 78.1% of um, the females um, did not return in 30 days as compared to 85.6% of males within males who returned in 30 days. So the difference isn't that large. So here we have 21.9% compared I'm sorry, uh, we have here, um, we have 21.9% compared to 14.4%. So here again, we don't have a big difference in, the, um, in males and females uh, returning in 30 days. So it would seem that um, uh, there isn't um, much of a relationship between gender and whether or not you return in 30 days. So let's take a look at another variable and see if we see anything different. Let's, uh, I'm gonna just to, let's get the command back. And I'm going to just press the up arrow and I'm gonna get the gender variable and, uh, and I'm gonna replace the gender variable with spouse. Okay. And um, then I'm going to hit enter. And we get our table again. And um, we want to look again at the, we'll look again at comparing those row totals to third value, third value in the cell. So here um, we have 94% um, of people with spouses not returning in 30 days um, as compared to 69.3%. That's um, a little, little less than a 30% difference. So let's take a look at um, the yeses. Here we have 5.8% of those with spouses returning in um, 30 days as compared to 30.7% of those without spouses returning in um, 30 days. So that's a very big difference here. So it would seem that ha having a spouse would be an important um, variable to think about. Certainly if you were um, the director of a social work department at a hospital, um, this would be one thing you might consider in terms of people being at risk of returning in 30 days, and you might decide to, uh, to use that in terms of providing services to those people. Um, so again, for more information, uh, please refer to the um, Making Your Case text.